Now, in the interest of complete and total fairness here, I tend to skew more negative on things. Some of you really dig that and appreciate it and feel like it is much different than a lot of the other perspectives you will get about wrestling here on YouTube. Fine, great. Others of you don't like it will say, if you hate it so much, why do you still watch? It's just not that easy, okay? But you feel that way, it's fine too. And I also fully own, understand, and admit to a bit of a personal bias when it comes to the thought of John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 34. This is a match to me that's about five years too late. This is a match to me featuring guys that just really don't matter that much in the grand scheme of things other than an Undertaker nostalgia pop and you got Cena still in the fold, you got to do something with him. And especially on the heels of WrestleMania 33 where The Undertaker had that brutal main event match with Roman Reigns, yet at the same point in time that match was so perfect and fitting and appropriate, sadly, in that it was supposed to be Taker's last ride. And it lets you know, if anything else, that it was okay. It was time. It was time for everybody, The Undertaker, the WWE, his fans, the company's fans, to let it go. Let the past be the past, and it is time to move on. Like, that was, to me, the whole thing with main eventing that match at WrestleMania 33, especially when you're talking about laying the hat and the coat in the ring. That should be it. It's all over. And based off of the heels of that, based off the heels of the fact that there is no more streak, and as a result, unfortunately, Taker really serves no purpose anymore. Because, as I thought, every match since WrestleMania 30 that Takers had at WrestleMania was really, to me, a lose-lose proposition for everybody involved. If Taker wins, it makes the other guy look stupid. If Taker loses, then it was stupid to end the streak, and it makes Taker look like not as much of a big deal. And it also diminishes Lesnar being the one to conquer the streak. And let's be real, the matches over the past couple of years, really starting with WrestleMania 30, haven't been all that particularly good. I mean, that just is what it is. And I know I personally have found myself just not really giving a crap about Taker at WrestleMania since the streak is over. It was like one of those things where they were tied in at the hip that Taker had his streak and he never lost at WrestleMania. And now, unfortunately, since that was gone, there really was no more appeal. So again, going into the whole thought and the buildup for Cena and Taker at 34, I was in an inherent disadvantage for giving a crap about this because it was going to be really, really hard for them to get me to care about this. And I can say unequivocally that this company has done absolutely nothing to get me to care about this match. In fact, they have accomplished an entirely different objective, which is to get me to care even less about it. And you might think I'm just being negative for the sake of being negative, but Christ Almighty, am I the only one that thinks this buildup to Cena and Taker has been god-awful terrible? Just flat-out effing terrible. For weeks you've been listening to John Cena cut these promos where it's ridiculous and it's so hard to take them so goddamn seriously. And then this past Monday on Raw, to me the worst of it all, where he's talking about it as if people are actually supposed to believe that he's just going to WrestleMania as a fan. Like, does anybody buy that? Like, he's saying this is his only path to WrestleMania is a match with The Undertaker. Then when he addresses the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, he points out the fact that he's lost the last several matches that he's had, so he doesn't want to take a spot away from somebody else who deserves it. So his answer to that is to challenge the guy that has only ever lost twice at WrestleMania, one of the biggest stars in the company's history. You just pointed out the fact that you lost your last several matches, and yet you think that gives you a right to sit there and call out The Undertaker for WrestleMania? I mean, and that just perfectly embodies and crystallizes so much of what Cena 
as a main event star for WWE has been over the years. He's ridiculous, he's incredibly hard to take seriously, and so much of what the company does with him and so much of what he does in terms of his promo, his character, his in-ring work is just absolutely ridiculous and again incredibly hard to take seriously. And I think about Cena, and I truly mean this when I say this, to me he has been the most boring big time main event star the WWE has ever had. And before you counter me with Randy Orton, who you know I think is boring as bricks and has been for long swaths of his career, at least with Randy Orton there was times, points, periods where he worked heel, then face, then heel, then face. There was at least some change in evolution, nice way to work that word in, with his character. For Cena it's been the same crap for almost 13 years now. And as he's cutting the same promo and the same promo and just coming across all types of pathetic and still doesn't work for me. And the whole notion of we're building up to this match, teasing it like it's not going to happen, knowing for all intents and purposes, unless we're going to troll everybody and we're going to send out the Rock at 34 to face Cena, because the third time is when it really matters. Everybody knows you're getting Cena versus Taker at WrestleMania. They wouldn't have devoted a month of television time plus to the concept of this match if it wasn't actually going to happen. And now as I look ahead to this, this is the ultimate lose-lose for me as a fan because now on the road to WrestleMania, they went down a similar path of what they did with the Bray Wyatt story at WrestleMania 31. Taker's been nowhere. There was no real angle. There was no real story. Taker just kind of showed up, and they worked an average match. And by God, at this point, we'd be lucky to get average out of this match come Sunday. But you think for what could potentially be, we keep saying this every year, but it would seem, for all intents and purposes, to be Taker's last WrestleMania match, you would think you would want to get him on television a couple of times. You would think you would want to get people as hyped up for this as they possibly can. Having Cena go out and basically cut the same type of ridiculous ass promo week after week after week where he's supposed to be likable but he continues to diss the dude that has done far more in the business than Cena could ever imagine is a much bigger star than Cena could ever hope to be. This is what's supposed to get us to buy in and be excited for the match? And I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it. Because ultimately, to me, this was a match that works so well if the streak is still alive. Imagine the legit fear of a lot of the adult hardcore male wrestling fans if you go into a WrestleMania main event, Cena versus Taker, and the streak is still there, the streak is still intact, the streak is still alive. You want to talk about people truly being emotionally invested in a way that few matches could touch them in their hearts and in their souls, that would do it. And I think about it this way too, how ridiculous it was, and I said it four years ago and I stand by it, it was stupid and ridiculous for them to end the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania at the hands of Brock Lesnar, and if for no other reason four years later, especially with the benefit of hindsight being 2020, what is so ridiculous about it is Taker has lost again, this time to Roman Reigns, and not only is that streak not intact, but both Taker and Lesnar are staring down the barrel of working their last WrestleMania match. So it didn't really do any good for Taker to put him over at Mania in that terrible match on the heels of that incredibly horrible buildup of a story that they had at 30. To sit there now, and both of them are still wrestling at Mania any damn ways. And this again to me is the ultimate lose-lose type of situation. Like if Taker beats Cena, I don't like Cena. I, on the one hand, could sit there and say I have no problem with him losing, but the reality is, is that even in some type of part-time capacity, Cena's still going to be in the fold for the next few years. And you cannot diminish him totally in all that investment you've put into him by having him lose every single damn match he's wrestled. So knowing you're going into this match, that there's a very good chance that Taker's last opponent last match at WrestleMania could result in a scene of victory that makes me want to freaking vomit. 
And then thinking about if Taker, if this is his last WrestleMania match, which you would think it would be, but God only freaking knows at this point, ugh. And he beats John Cena, then what the hell was the point of all of this? Now the guy that's not going to be there anymore rides off into the sunset, winning a match that doesn't fucking matter at all, beating a guy that still is supposed to matter and is going to be in the fold in some type of way over the next couple of years. And especially as I look ahead to WrestleMania, and I have that very realistic fear that we're going to get fucking Biker Taker, which is the last damn thing I want to see. I hated that Taker. I hated so many things about that Taker. That's not the Taker I grew up with. That's not the Taker that I was a fan of for so many years. That was the Taker that bored the shit out of me. And to think as a go in a WrestleMania on Sunday, he might ride out on his freaking motorcycle on Sunday and the crowd's going crazy. Again, I'm just going to want to vomit. Everything about this, to me, has been too little, far too late. And it's just one of these examples of how the WWE can really screw the pooch on something. And just when I think that it can't get any worse, the WWE finds a way to make it even worse. The only thing I'm looking forward to on Sunday at WrestleMania 34 between John Cena and The Undertaker is for that match to get the fuck over so that way we can move the hell on with the rest of the night. Unless this match main events too. And the way this thing is going, who the hell knows? And when it comes to that main event, frankly, once you get past the nostalgia pops, who the hell cares?